Did you just get a new MacBook Pro and you want some tips to help get it set up? Well, you're in the right place because in this video, I'm going to show you the first 10 things that I do when I get a new MacBook Pro to set it up right. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll share with you a bonus tip to help you make the most out of the laptop. Hi, I'm Aiden Quigley from AQ.ie and welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about tech, web design and branding. I've been using Apple computers since the 90s, so I've uncovered a few hidden tips that help you to make the most out of your laptop. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through my top tips and tricks to get you set up on a new MacBook Pro and get you making the most out of it. First though, give the video an old thumbs up if you like it, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button to turn on post notifications. Done? Good. Let's go. So the first thing that I like to do is to do a software update just to make sure that there are no outstanding software updates that need to be done and that I'll get the best performance and security out of my new purchase. So to do that, I would go to the Apple menu, then down to system preferences and over to software update over here. Then it will just check for updates automatically. And if you have anything, it will let you know. You can also set whether you want updates to be downloaded and installed automatically. It can install macOS updates or app updates from the App Store automatically as well. So you get to choose which of these you want to. I prefer not to have the macOS updates installed automatically in case I have some projects open that might need to be saved or whatever. So I just have that unticked. The second thing I do then, still in system preferences, is I go to security and privacy, then over to file vault, which is the second option here, and I turn it on. So you have to click to input your password so that you can turn it on. The benefit of having this turned on is that your disk is encrypted, so your data is a little bit more secure. The next thing that I do then is I go to security and privacy, to general, and I tick use your Apple Watch to unlock apps and your Mac. So this allows you to, when you're wearing the watch, if you're within a foot or two when you wake it up, it will automatically unlock. And this saves a lot of time every day, especially because I like to lock my Mac when I get away from it. This is very useful. And also one of the reasons why being in Apple's ecosystem makes a lot of sense. If you have an Apple Watch and an iPhone and a MacBook, it all just kind of works really well together. And that's one of the best features of having an Apple Watch. So the next thing that I do then is I change the trackpad speed to be faster. It's usually somewhere here in the middle or slightly slower. And for me, it just takes a little bit longer to get where I want to go. So I just speed that up a little bit and that allows me to navigate the desktop with ease and quickly. I also make sure that I have tap to click turned on. I use that a lot. And then as well, I just turn on all of these. So scroll direction, zoom in or out, smart zoom, rotate, and then more gestures. So you have these kind of app expose, the one that shows the desktop, mission control, launch pad, all of those. The fifth thing that I do when I get a new MacBook Pro to set it up is I go to the displays and I create a color profile called calibrate. Hit calibrate here. So the native white point is D65, which I don't quite like because it's too harsh on the eyes for the whites. So I bring it down nice and warm to a nice D50, which is often used for graphic design. You just continue through here and it will create a color calibration. Then the sixth thing that I do is I set up hot corners. So you have these gestures in your trackpad if you use a trackpad, but for those who maybe use a mouse or they don't like using the multi-touch gestures, you can just go to mission control here and down to hot corners in the bottom corner and then set these up as you like. So the one on the right, for me, the top right shows the desktop, the bottom right shows the all windows, no matter what the program. The top left shows the application window. So if you have multiple Safari tabs open, you can then see the different tabs. And then the bottom left one does the lock screen. So then you can just log back in by touching Touch ID. So the next feature is one that's kind of hidden away in accessibility. So you have to go to accessibility and you go to zoom and click this, use scroll gestures with modifier keys to zoom. So 
this one is control. So what it does is when you hit control and you use your two fingers to scroll up and down the trackpad, it will zoom in to the screen. So I find this really useful if I have exhausted how much I can zoom in on a website, but I still want to check something. You can zoom in right in to see what is on the screen. You can go so far as to see the individual pixels. The next thing that I do then is I go to Finder, open a new Finder window, click on it and go to View and I click show path bar and I also go to view and show status bar. So that's going to show you the path of where you are in different folders there and it's also going to show you how many items are in your folder when you have things selected it's going to show you how many items you have selected and how many gigabytes or megabytes they are the next thing that i like to do then is to turn on do not disturb and to schedule that so that i don't get unwanted notifications when i'm trying to work and focus so to do that you go to system preferences and you go to notifications and then to do not disturb up the top and you can just schedule when you want to be uh, when you want it turned on here, so you go 2200 until seven. On my desktop, I have it turned on permanently. And then the final thing I like to do is to add things back to the menu bar. With Mac OS 11, Apple have removed a lot of stuff from the menu bar here, and they've kind of popped it into this control center further away than they used to be. You have to click a few times to get to them. I like to put the Wi-Fi here. I like to put the Bluetooth, the sound back in the menu there because I'm not a massive fan of the touch bar. Specifically for changing the volume, I find it to be very annoying. That's why I like to keep this in my menu bar. So to do that, you go to the various different things. So Bluetooth, you go show Bluetooth in menu bar. Then you go to sound, show volume in the menu bar. Same for the network, the Wi-Fi. Show Wi-Fi status in the menu bar. You can also put the display up in the menu bar show mirroring options in the menu bar when available. One of the other things that I like to do, and this is the bonus tip that I was telling you about, is I like to add different fingerprints to my Touch ID. So I actually have three different fingerprints for my Touch ID. So I have my thumb, my forefinger, and my other forefinger. So in case my hand is busy holding my phone or something, I can use whichever hand to unlock it. So that's something that is very useful and actually saves a lot of time having to shuffle things around in your hand if you have multiple fingerprints set up. And an extra, extra bonus is I download these productivity apps that you can find in this video right here to help me to be more productive on my Mac. So that's it. Did you learn something that you didn't know? Let me know in the comments below if you found it useful. And of course, give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell button so you get notifications when I post new videos. Don't forget to check out some of my other videos over here and thanks for watching.